Okay, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration. I'm going to make it not very long because I want you to actually pay attention and follow along with me. So we'll make it nice and short. And I want you just to get a basics for how to get started making the shape of a creature or an animal of some kind. And again, this creature project, the main thing that makes it not a character is that it's not a biped, two arms, two legs, standing upright, all right? It needs to be some kind of animal-like creature. No one responded in the chat, so I hope at least someone out there is watching. I'm going to record this demonstration in case you get lost along the way. Um, don't feel necessary to interrupt me to get caught up because I'm going to record this. So just try to, if you get lost along the way, just do your best to uh, get caught back up. Okay. So hopefully you've got familiar with 3D Coat a little bit already at this point. I've had you go through the quick start tutorial missions, which shows you how to navigate and all that. So I'm not going to be covering the basics of how to use 3D Coat. You should know that already. I'm going to just show you some specific techniques and things to do to get started making a creature specifically. Okay. So here we are. We got this beginning screen. And what we want to do is click voxel sculpting in the upper right here. Let me make sure that you can see my cursor real quick. That'll be easier. Capture mouse pointer. There we go. Okay, now you can see that little yellow circle. It'd be easier to see what I'm clicking on. Okay, so I'm clicking voxel sculpting right here. It gives us a choice of a few different uh, base models to start from. And in this case, let's just start with the, the smallest sphere right here. So just click that. And you will see a clay colored sphere in your scene. Also, as I'm doing things here, if you don't know how to navigate or all that, it's actually going to say it down at the bottom of the screen. So I'm running the software that shows it. Also, you can see right above my cursor, it says left button down. That means I'm pushing down my left mouse button. Okay. Now I'm actually using a Cintiq drawing tablet, but this is this way it translates for you telling you what mouse buttons to push that I'm doing. And you'll notice I hold alt key down a lot. So you may just see the, the word alt down here all the time because I pretty much always have my left hand can't even see it from the camera, but my left hand is on the keyboard by the alt key almost all the time because I'm constantly either rotating around the object or I am zooming in and out of the object or I am panning, like moving the camera uh, on the flat plane in front of it like this. And I'm doing that by holding the middle mouse button down. It's not showing that on the screen, but holding alt in the middle, middle mouse button. Whoops. Something fell over. The middle mouse button will let you pan. So there we go. Just wanted to quickly go over that because you really will be lost if you can't move around in the scene. All right. So to start a creature, first thing we want to do is just generally shape this sphere more into a torso, right? Because there's nothing, uh, well, almost nothing. I guess Mike Wazowski is the only exception is perfectly round or Kirby maybe, but we want to stretch it out. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Wazowski. Okay. So what we want to get is just the transform tool. So it's down here in the, uh, adjust section. I always forget exactly where looking for transform. There it is. So in the adjust section, transform. And now we can move, rotate, and scale our sphere to kind of generally shape it. So I'm going to drag, let me get a little closer so we can see this. I'm going to drag either the back or the front little cube right here, the cube, 
and that's going to scale it in that direction. Okay, so we'll get more of like an oval shape for the body when we do that. So again, I just drug the actual cube, which is for scaling. All right. Zoom out a little bit. So we've got this kind of oval shape. And while we got the transform tool, I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it up slightly. Because I'm basically going to be making some kind of lizard or horse, something like that. And I'm just make it a little wider too. So I'm going to drag the cube over on the side to widen it out a little bit. Okay. So I'll just click OK in this box up here to get out of the way. And we're done with the transform tool and we're ready to move on to our main tool, the one I want to talk about the most. And that is the curves tool. Okay, so look over here in your panel and we're going to get the curves tool, which is third one down in the objects panel. Okay. So with the curves tool, there's a few things I want to do going forward. First thing I want to do is turn on symmetry. So I'm going to hit the S key on my keyboard, pulls open the little symmetry palette, and I want to enable symmetry in this case on the Z axis. It kind of depends on which axis you scaled from. So, oops. I'm wanting mine to be splitting it down this way, not in half like that. So let's make sure that X is off. Uh, let me control Z. There we go. So S. And on the Z axis, I want symmetry. Okay, so that's creating this blue wall right in the middle of our object. And what that means is anything that we do on one side is automatically going to be done on the other side. All right, so that's going to save us a lot of time, and it's also just kind of necessary when you're making creatures because there is some symmetry, at least in the beginning. All right, so I'm just getting off the transform tool, going back to my curves tool. There it is. Okay, so we've got symmetry enabled on the correct axis. Again, if you scaled that way, you're going to want, want it to be on the x-axis. It just depends on how you scaled it. Okay. So the curves tool. We're now ready to start placing a curve point, and we got this in the extrude mode, which is what I like to stay in. And first thing we're going to do is enable surface snap over here. Surface snap. And what that's going to do is enable us to place a curve point right on the surface. And I'm going to hold my right mouse button down, drag to the right to make my curve point bigger. Because this is going to be kind of like where the shoulder or the main legs coming out. All right, let me get a little closer so you can see this. So with surface snap on, now that curve point is, is trying to stay on the surface of that object, right? And that's important because we want it to be right on the surface. Oops, I accidentally clicked. So let's start with the back legs. I'm just going to click once on the surface, and that generates this red point on there. So that's our first curve point. Uh, continue. Okay, and from here, we want to click and drag from that point to extrude out the leg. So click and drag. Now, one thing you may have trouble as you're doing that, I hit Control Z to undo it. As you're pulling it out, watch what happens. It tries to stay snapped on that surface until you get so far, and then it will just rip off, okay? but it's trying to keep on the surface because we have that surface snap enabled over there. So just to make life a little easier, control Z again to undo. I'm gonna go disable surface snap now because I don't want it to keep trying to snap to the surface as I'm building this. Just want it in the beginning 
as we created that first point. Okay, so now I can click and drag from that and easily just pull out a leg point. Right, let's zoom out a little bit. And then I can click and drag again to keep pulling out points. And it's okay if the size is not right as we do this because we can adjust that later. In fact, let's go ahead and do some adjustments now. So as we go down on the leg, it's probably going to get smaller. So to change the size of any of these points, all you have to do is hold down the right mouse button, put your cursor over that point, and then drag left and right, okay? So clicking and dragging from these points while holding down different mouse buttons does different things. So right mouse button scales the point. Oops, do that again. Right mouse button scales. Middle mouse button will let you move the point around. So if you can just remember the mouse buttons do different things while you're hovering over these points, that's really all you need to know. Because from there you just kind of jump around and eyeball it. So I want to make this bigger, right drag, make it bigger towards the body. Maybe make it a little smaller here. So right drag to the left, make it a little smaller. Okay, and now we're going to pull out a foot. So let's drag from that point. It's extruded out another point. I want to move it a little bit, so I'm going to use the middle mouse button and move it. Okay, and I'm going to extrude out some toes. So pull again, again, and again. I've got three toes. I want to make those flat, so I'm going to move them up with the middle mouse button. I know I'm moving a little faster now, but hopefully you're getting the concept here. It's just you got to use all your mouse buttons as you're doing this. Middle mouse button to move, right mouse button to scale up or down, and left mouse button just to drag out more extrusions. Okay, so now we've got two legs in the back already. I'll maybe pull this point down a little bit right here. Maybe even up the toes a little bit by holding Alt and middle, oh no, sorry, not Alt, just middle mouse button on the point. There we go. Now let's do a little bit more extrusion to create some claws. So click and drag, middle mouse button to uh, move it a little bit right mouse button to scale it down a lot so it comes to a point. Move our camera around so that we can middle mouse drag that up. Okay, so really, that's all you have to memorize is using the middle mouse button using the right mouse button and, and then left mouse button on each of the points. So again, I'm gonna scale that down. Oops. Scale down with the right mouse button. Look at it from a different angle, pull those claws up a little bit. The biggest thing about sculpting in 3D is just constantly moving around and looking at your object from different angles. Okay, so a lot of just tiny movements with the middle mouse button, right mouse button to scale that down even more. There we go. Okay, so at this point, we've got a leg. Let's go ahead and quickly make another leg. So I'm going to click on the surface here. and Oh, look at that. Look what happened. This is a good time to learn a new part. So 
because this is the last point I used, when I clicked up here, it continued this on. And we don't want that. So I'm going to hit Control Z one time, two times. There we go. And before I click on the surface, I want to click New Curve over here in the Tools palette. So New Curve. And now when I go and place my new point for the front legs, there we go. It's placed it exactly like we want. All right, so let me just scale that up a little bit with my right mouse button, give him some bigger shoulders. Maybe look at this from the top. And then left mouse button drag to create the front legs coming out. A right mouse button to scale it down a bit. Left mouse button to drag out from it. And again, and again. So we can have sort of a heel. So middle mouse button to pull that down. Okay. So now I'll pull out three toes really fast. One, two, three. Middle mouse button, move them around. Look at it from the side so we can middle mouse button to pull those up some. Okay, now right mouse button to scale it down. And remember, we're, we're not holding the Alt key down or we're using the Curves tool. We're literally just using the mouse buttons. There we go. So it's just repositioning, rescaling, and pulling out more points. All right, so pull out some more claws. And this time I'm going to show you a new technique. Let me just pull these out. So instead of scaling these last um, claws down really small like we did back there, let's select the very end point, and I'm going to show you a new thing. So if I select that point and then under Profile, I change it from Straight to spike. Now look at that. That point has gone down to a spike. So it's more like a claw. Okay, so we could pull that up some. Same here. I'm going to click to select that point. And then I'm going to go to profile and change it from straight to spike. Same here. Select it. Here we go, select it, change the profile to spike. Cool. All right, so now I can just kind of reposition that. So he's got these spiky hands coming out. All right, so now let's say we wanted to add another point to create another knuckle here. Maybe so this doesn't go straight down, it has a little bend. So if we want to add another point in the middle, all you have to do is make sure that your cursor is right in the middle there, and you'll see it snaps right to it. So as soon as I click once, just left click, it creates another point right there. So I'll do it again here and here. And then I'll just move them out a little bit. See that? So now it's really getting this curve happening between the endpoints. There we go. All right. So it's mostly just a lot of little subtle adjustments till it gets to looking like you want. All right, one more quick thing before we actually apply this. If we zoom in really close to where this joint is. You can see there's a gap right there. And we don't want that either. We want it to continue right there. So select it. And instead of straight profile, let's change it to hemisphere. 
So hemisphere is going to just round it out right there so it blends. And we definitely want to do that up here on the leg. Look at this. There's a huge gap right there, right where the knee would be. So we need to select that point. We need to change the profile to hemisphere. There we go. All right. So anywhere that you have gaps, you will need to do that. Then we got our creature going. Let's give him a tail real fast, and then we'll s start making the head. We give him two tails. Why not? So I'll select here. Oops. Make sure we choose new curve again up on the tool palette. You know what? Let's not even give him a tail. He might look cool with that one. And I'm going to just look over here at this side of the model that doesn't have the red points, and we can see where all of our gaps are. So we need to select all of these points over there and change the hemisphere. Let's just do that for the real bad ones, like the back knee over there. Select that one. Profile to hemisphere. This one, profile, hemisphere, there we go, profile, hemisphere. Okay, so it's looking much better over here now. I don't see any gaps. Not bad. Now, you, of course, want to spend a lot more time on this and perfect it to look exactly like you want. I'm just kind of doing it really fast to show you how to get started. Let me make this a little bigger here. Not that small. Okay. So now let's create another point. But make sure we hit new curve first. New curve. And I don't want the point right there, so let me just hold my middle mouse button and drag it. I'm going to turn the surface snap back on because I want that to snap to the surface. There we go. That makes it so much easier to do. Okay, now I'm going to turn it back off because I don't want to keep snapping to the surface. Whoops. And I'm going to drag out from this middle point. Okay, now I don't want him to have two heads. You might for your creature, but not, not right now. So hit Control Z to undo that. And this time, I'm going to turn on Symmetry Snap. So Symmetry Snap does exactly like it says. It'll take anything that's symmetrical and kind of snap it together. Okay, so I extruded out the neck. I'll do it again. And maybe pull it down some. Make it bigger with the right mouse button. So this will take some practice to get good with, you know, knowing when to make it bigger, when where to move it. All that just takes practice, okay? So don't, don't get overwhelmed with this. I know, you know it seems kind of technical, but it's really not. It feels very artistic once you get the flow of using those three different mouse buttons. Okay, so we've got somewhat of a head. It's good enough for now. I'm going to leave it like that. And let's say that we want to go ahead and start sculpting on our creature. So what we need to do is if we just jump to a sculpting tool, watch what happens. I'll just get... Expand. Oh, it just disappeared. All my hard work is gone. No, not really. All you need to do is go back to your curves tool and all the stuff you just did will still be there. 
Also, it's a good idea to save out your actual curves as a separate file. You can do that when you hit save right here. It'll let you save out the curve itself to a different file, and you can bring that in to other projects. So I'll just call that one. Okay, so like I was saying, if I jump to another tool, it just disappears. So what I need to do is actually hit apply right there. As soon as I hit apply, that actually committed my curves into clay. Okay, you can think about it like that. You've just converted all your curves into actual clay, and now you can begin sculpting on it, refining it, making it look better. So let's just start doing that real quick. I'm gonna go jump up to my sculpting tools, voxel tools at the top. And I'm gonna start off with the fill brush because I'm gonna fill in these areas where it's kind of looks like two points are right here. So that next got like a band. So if I get fill and I just start painting on it, make this a little larger. That's basically just filling in the gaps. So let's do it really close to the body right here and the neck. See, look at that. There we go. So it's literally just filling it in, making it look more like we want. There we go. You may need to increase the strength or the size of your brush if, if you're not getting the results you want. So you do that by holding the right mouse button down and dragging left or right while your cursor is on the, the sculpt or up and down to change the strength. Okay. So we're just roughing it in, making sure that's going to be really ugly gaps. You're also just kind of creating musculature where the uh, legs or appendages actually connect to the body. Okay. So that in combination with the smooth brush. So let's go activate the smooth brush. So we can do that either by clicking over here or no matter what brush you have, I still got the fill brush here. I'm just kind of filling out his chest area a little bit. Okay. So smoothing is something you got to be careful with because it will eat into your model or, you know, be very destructive of what you've done. So let's go ahead and try it. Holding down the shift key. And you see that thing changed to green. And I'm going to click with my right mouse button and drag down because I don't want my smoothing to be strong. I want it to be weak. Okay. So I can see like this little wrinkle right there I want to get rid of. So just zoom in and I can kind of smooth that out. Let me make my brush smaller. Okay, so from here, it's really just a lot of practice, a lot of experimentation. This is a very artistic program, so don't expect yourself to be a master at it right away. Even if you have previous drawing skills, it's going to take some time. But, you know, in just a few minutes, we made something that looks somewhat like a creature, okay? So let's go ahead and double click over here in the shaders just to give him a different skin. And I'm going to start using this to smooth it out a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and use a few different tools now. 
I want to create a mouth for this guy. So one way to do that is with the cutoff tool. Cutoff tool is extremely useful for a lot of reasons. If I can find it. Sorry, my thing's being kind of sticky. There it is. So it's in the adjust section, just like the transform tool. It's called the cutoff tool. And by default, when I use it, it gives you, you a square selection or a marquee selection. So that's good for just like chopping things off, right? So I just chopped his head off. Whoops. Control Z to undo that. And instead, I'm going to change the mode up here, the stroke mode, change the mode of the cutoff tool to the stroke lasso mode. It looks like a little blob. And what that's going to allow us to do is freehand draw a cutout of what we want to cut out. So I want to just dig into his face right here to create an opening for the mouth. So I'll just go that and just crudely draw a cutout. Boom. Done. He's got a mouth now. It's pretty powerful. So that's one great thing about 3D code is you can literally just, you know, punch a hole through something by drawing in the cutoff. Look at that. All the way through. Okay. So next we would want to smooth out his mouth a little bit. So let's just hold down uh, let's see. There's a lot of tools you could use. I suggest not using the surface tools. At least in the beginning, it's better to only use the voxel tools. I'm not going to even explain the difference between voxel and surface right now, just because I, I don't want to get too technical with you guys. I want you to treat this more like an artistic project. So we'll just smooth out right here so that looks a little better on the edge. Yeah, you were supposed to be following along. There we go. All right, so next you need some eyes. So for eyes, first we want to sculpt into the head, dig into the head to create kind of an eye cavity. And then we'll make a new shape to put in as the eyeball. All right, so... To create the cavity for the eye, let's just use the grow brush, which by default, when you use it, makes things grow, right? So if he was going to be like an amphi amphibian, then his eyes would kind of stick out like that. Or maybe your creature does. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I want to dig into his head so that we can put some eyes in there. That makes him, I guess, more like a lizard. So... Holding the control key down, see down here it says CTRL. It means I'm holding the control key down. And now when I left click and drag on the surface, it's going to dig into it. Like that. That looks more like a nostril, but it's totally fine. So now I'm going to make an eyeball. So I need to make a new shape. And to make a new shape, I should go ahead and make a new layer. This is a great time to make a new layer. So in the sculpt tree panel down here, we're going to click, get out of here. We're going to click this little plus sign in the bottom left. That's going to create a new volume layer. And I'm just going to rename it right away to eyes. That way we don't get it confused with the other layer. It's really important to do that. Okay, so now that we got a new volume, we're going to go down to the objects panel, and the first one is called primitives down here. And primitives is just like you think. It's adding a primitive shape, all these up here. And the default one is a sphere, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to start moving that into place so it's by the eye cavity. I'm dragging the arrows here in the direction I want it to go in. 
And that is way too big for the eyeballs. Maybe your creature has huge eyes, but I want this to fit in the cavity. So I'm gonna drag this circle that's around the sphere to the inward, inward. So it doesn't matter which direction, I just have to drag towards the center to make it smaller. Okay, reposition that a little closer. Okay, so it's a perfect sphere and we don't want it to be a perfect sphere. I want it to kind of fit in that cavity, but to start actually sculpting it or transforming it or whatever I'm gonna do, I need to hit apply, just like I did with the curves, right? And before I hit apply, I need to make sure that I've got my new layer selected because I don't want to make the eyes be the same color or, or the same part as the body because we want the eyes to look different. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply. And then I'll just go choose a different tool. Whoops, I zoomed in. Maybe it's a 2D paint tool. It doesn't really matter what tool you choose. Just want to see that he does indeed have eyeballs now. Okay. So before I start shaping it, I'm going to go ahead and choose a new shader for the eyes. Something that looks more like eyes instead of brown clay. So there's different categories of shaders at the top here. And I'm going to just choose refractive. You can choose whatever you want, though. Uh, let's see. Maybe this one. I want it to be pretty bright looking. Sure. Okay, so now I'm going to start sculpting the eyeball to kind of fit in there a little better. So scroll down here to the adjust section. There it is. And I want the move tool this time. So the move brush a move tool lets you literally just grab your clay and move it around. So I want it to kind of move this way. So I'm just going to drag. Let me make it a little bigger. There we go. And back here too, just drag. And what's great because we have this in a different volume it's not affecting the green. It's literally just sculpting the eyeball into place. Cool. Let me zoom in really close here and I can uh, pan the environment around. You can see that spinning around in his eyes. In the parking lot. Yep. In fact, if you want to see it more clearly, there's a little button at the top. I forgot what the icon is. Or you can hold shift and right mouse button, left and right, and it oh will unblur the background. See, this is actually where, where we are. We're in, we're in a parking garage somewhere in Europe, I think, <laughs> judging by the cars. Um, oh, oh, yeah, Hostiva, see the indication. You can also change your background up here at the top. This little panorama picture will let you pick a different background. So there's this kind of flat studio lighting or maybe outdoors. And as we spin that environment around, so hold shift down and left drag, you can spin that environment around, which is cool for checking your textures on your model. Okay. It's reflective, that's right, because I chose a refractive shader. Okay, so it, this is not a complete creature by any means, but this is just a starting point. I'm going to go ahead and stop the demonstration now just so that this video doesn't get to be super long. But if you have any questions about specific tools in 3D Coat, be sure to message me, ask me in person. Oh, real quickly. Fun tool to use to create some teeth is the spikes tool. So let me just select the body layer here and I'll give him some teeth real quick. 
make my brush really small and I can just start pulling up some teeth out, out of there. There's some big ones here. Now, this particular model doesn't have a lot of resolution so that those teeth are starting to look kind of chunky, right? Especially with this shader. So let me hit Control Z a few times and I'm gonna increase the resolution on my layer. Now you gotta be careful doing this because if you add too much resolution, it's gonna slow down your computer or make it crash. So don't do this like a lot. But I'm gonna increase resolution a couple of times and you can see it says 4X next to it now. It means it's got four times resolution. And now when I use the spikes tool to pull out, I get much more detail, see that? Maybe make this a little smaller, give him some smaller teeth in here. All right, and then we could go back in again with the fill tool, full, uh, I can't even talk, fill brush and kind of make that blend in a little better. Yeah. So you can change your model dramatically really fast with some of these brushes. Just got to be careful. So just kind of blend that in a little better so he doesn't have teeth just sticking out. All right. He looks a little more menacing now, at least. Here we go. So that's the beginning of starting to create a creature in 3D Coat. Hopefully you picked up something from the demonstration. I, I am going to record this. It has been recorded. So you'll be able to access this if you did not follow along. Thanks for watching.